The Taliban took power in Afghanistan on August 15th. China carried out assault drills near Taiwan on August 17th. But the White House National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan said immediately that the U.S. commitment to Taiwan and to Israel remains as strong as it's ever been. And on August 19th, U.S. President Joe Biden said that Taiwan, South Korea and NATO were fundamentally different situations to Afghanistan. He reaffirms Washington's commitment to Taiwan. August 4th, the U.S. State Department approved a sale of 750 million U.S. dollars worth of military equipment to Taiwan. And the U.S. State Department said on August 21st, the U.S. continues to support a peaceful resolution of cross-Taiwan Strait relations consistent with the wishes and best interests of the people of Taiwan. Taiwan's Ministry of Foreign Affairs thanks the U.S. for upholding the wishes and best interests of the people of Taiwan and warns that China dreams of emulating the Taliban, but Taiwan has got the will and means to defend itself. Responding to the intensive and increasing threats from Beijing, Taiwan's defense ministry had proposed a special budget of 200 billion NT dollars to mass-produce missiles with precision and long-range capabilities. The planned special budget was in line with President Tsai's 2019 call to increase production of the Tiangong-3 long-range surface-to-air missile and the Xiongfeng-3 mid-range supersonic anti-ship missile. Hello, I'm Wade Lee. Thank you for joining us on this week's Funday News. Here are your top stories. The chaos that ensued in Afghanistan after the U.S. decided to pull out its troops has truly shocked the world. China saw this as an opportunity to use psychological warfare to force the Taiwanese people to question the U.S. and their commitment to us. Yet, the U.S. reiterated their solid support to Taiwan with assuring words, as Taiwan stands its ground against the threats from China. After President Joe Biden took office in January, he continued the agreement between the Taliban and the U.S. to withdraw American troops from Afghanistan this year. On May 1st, the Taliban and its allied militants began a nationwide offensive. On July 8th, the U.S. announced the deadline for the withdrawal being August 31st. But on August 15th, Kabul, the capital city of Afghanistan, fell to Taliban forces. Although the civil war is not completely over yet, the Taliban is actually ruling most parts of Afghanistan. China announced that it is ready to develop good neighborliness and friendly cooperation with Afghanistan. China capitalizes on the power change to bring about fear to the Taiwanese in questioning the dependability and credibility of the support from the U.S. But White House National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan said immediately to the threat of China that the U.S. commitment to Taiwan and to Israel remains as strong as it's ever been. And on August 19th, U.S. President Joe Biden said that Taiwan, South Korea and NATO were fundamentally different situations to Afghanistan. He reaffirms Washington's commitment to Taiwan. Former Taipei Office Director of the American Institute in Taiwan, Stephen Young, said the message from Biden is that Beijing should be very careful in any assumption that Washington would look the other way if it intensifies its threats regarding Taiwan. As a matter of fact, China launched assault drills near Taiwan on August 17th, two days after the Taliban took over Afghanistan. The assault drills were equipped with fighter jets, anti-submarine aircrafts, and combat ships spotted to the southwest and southeast of Taiwan. The drills were held in both the South China Sea and the Philippine Sea, as well as the Bashi Channel that connects the two seas. In the meantime, some intense measures were initiated in August between Taiwan the U.S., Japan, France, India, and Australia. On August 3rd, the Japanese news reported that Tokyo intends to deploy ground self-defense force missile units on the island of Ishigaki next year. August 4th, the U.S. State Department approved a sale of 750 million U.S. dollars worth of military equipment to Taiwan. 
One week later, officers from the United States and Taiwanese Coast Guards held a virtual meeting on August 10th to discuss improving cooperation and communication. On August 12th, senior officials from the U.S., Japan, India, and Australia held a virtual quadrilateral security dialogue meeting to discuss strategic challenges in the Indo-Pacific region, as well as the importance of maintaining peace and security in the Taiwan Strait. And according to Japanese media, Japan's Liberal Democratic Party is planning to hold online talks on security issues with Taiwan's ruling Democratic Progressive Party this month at the earliest. On August 12th, Australian media The Sydney Morning Herald reported that Japanese Defense Minister Kishi Nobuo sees Taiwan's defense stability as important not just for his own country, but for the stability of the whole world. Responding to the chaos in Afghanistan, President Tsai Ing-wen said Taiwan needs to be stronger, more united, and more resolute in protecting ourselves, given the growing military threat from Beijing. According to media reports, the Defense Ministry has proposed a special budget of 200 billion NT dollars to mass-produce missiles with precision and long-range capabilities. Reports show that the 7.14 billion US dollar special budget is about 54% of current military spending. The fund will be used to boost missile manufacturing by the National Chongshan Institute of Science and Technology. The said missiles mass production plan was in line with President Tsai's 2019 call to increase production of the Tiangong 3 long range surface to air missile and the Shengfeng 3 mid range supersonic anti ship missile. Both of those would be upgraded, and there were also plans to develop a hypersonic missile and a mid-range air-launched cruise missile with an expected range of more than 2,000 kilometers. The special budget would be in addition to the proposed 372.6 billion NT dollars in defense spending for next year. Media reports the military is including an anti-submarine warfare helicopter budget in the national defense budget for 2022 to purchase 10 MH-60R Seahawk helicopters, along with advanced sonar and avionic systems, MK-54 or MK-50 torpedoes, Hellfire missiles, laser-guided rockets, and machine guns from the U.S. According to the reports, the anti-submarine helicopter, the MH-60R Seahawk, is a procurement case that Taiwan and the U.S. have repeatedly discussed since 2014. The Navy has listed the item into the central government's general budget for fiscal year 2022. The report said once Taiwan finally includes the item in its defense budget, Washington can announce a potential sale later. The MH-60R was formally deployed by the U.S. Navy in 2006. Its onboard sensors include the Missile Approach Warning System, an electro-optical system that integrates forward-looking infrared and laser rangefinder, and a more advanced airborne low-frequency sonar. Offensive capabilities are improved by the addition of the new MK-54 air-launched torpedoes and Hellfire missiles. Next, our correspondent Anna will share how our allies have increased their national budget and how that reinforces our defense in the front lines of the battle for liberty and democracy. Anna? Thanks, Wade. Yes, indeed. The US and Japan are backing Taiwan with a practically increasing national defense budget. The United States Senate Armed Services Committee voted last month to advance the fiscal year 2022 National Defense Authorization Act, which includes provisions aimed at strengthening defense cooperation between the U.S. and Taiwan. 
The U.S. House Armed Services Committee is expected to vote on the bill on September 1st. Media reports, according to the U.S. Fiscal Year 2022 National Defense Authorization Act, the bill requires the Secretary of Defense to provide an assessment of Taiwan's defensive asymmetric capabilities and a plan for assisting Taiwan with the improvement of such capabilities. Also, an assessment of the feasibility of increasing defense cooperation with Taiwan and the efforts by Taiwan's Defense Department to deter and respond to Chinese use of force to alter the status quo with respect to Taiwan. Meanwhile, the U.S. will also work on the feasibility and advisability of enhanced cooperation between the National Guard and Taiwan. The bill also noted that it shall be the policy of the U.S. to maintain the ability of the United States Armed Forces to deny a fait accompli against Taiwan in order to deter the People's Republic of China from using military force to unilaterally change the status quo with Taiwan. Other than our own defense budget increasing and that of the United States, Japan will increase its defense budget in 2022 in response to Chinese military expansion in its neighborhood. The Japanese budget will also cover the cost of installing a recently announced missile deployment on Ishigaki Island. According to media reports, Japanese Deputy Prime Minister Aso Taro said Japan must respond to the status quo revealed in the East and South China Seas, as well as the Taiwan Strait, and that increasing defense spending will serve as a deterrent to Chinese aggression. The report said Tokyo's defense spending has grown for nine consecutive years and is seen as a reaction to the threat posed by China's expanding naval operations as well as North Korea's growing ballistic missile arsenal and nuclear weapons program. The Japan News reported that Tokyo intends to deploy ground self-defense force missile units on the island of Ishigaki next year to join existing units on Amami Oshima, Okinawa and Miyako Islands. And that's all the time we have for today. Thank you for joining us on Fun Day News. Let's make every day a fun day. I'm Wade Lee, your host, and I will see you next time.